I've been asked many times by my viewers to show them how to uh, pre-populate text boxes coming from a database and here's a good example you have a grid view uh, of records and the grid view may not show all the fields and you want to be able to go to a form which will get pre-populated with a data for this particular record and then you'll be able to edit uh, or do whatever else you want with that form so I have a functioning uh, situation working here for example let's uh, I have a students table which I've made up and let's click on view and it goes to uh, about ASPX and it passes the ID as a parameter and the text boxes get pre-populated let's try another one Steve Jobs and we got Bob Bush and so on and so forth so let's get ready for the code uh, we're gonna start out by starting a new website we're gonna call it Repopulate. We're going to be in Visual Basic. For those of you looking to uh, for the code in C Sharp, you can go to the Developer Fusion and get the code translated into C Sharp. Just going to remove the default markup that Visual Studio gave us. And we're going to, the first thing we're going to do is add a database. SQL Server Database. Add a new table. This is going to be a simple students table. First, going to be first column is going to be ID, which will be an integer. First name and we're chart fifty. Last name and teacher. Let's save this. No, before we save this table, let us um, make the ID primary key, and we'll make it identity. Specification to true. And we'll call the stable students. Click on OK. The next thing we'll do is we'll add uh, an SXD, a data set. So what we have to do is open up the server explorer and drag our students table onto it. And it creates a data table and, and uh, a table adapter for us automatically. Let's save this. Let's go to our database and add some some data. Go to table data. And the first name is going to be Bob Bush. And the teacher is going to be John. And as you see, it gets an auto ID of, of one. And let's add a couple of more. And we added uh, three students here. So let's go to our default ASPX and add a, a grid view by simply dragging this table onto the main content. And it'll give us a grid view and all its fields. Let's edit columns. Let's convert the ID field to a template field. Click on OK. Go to the code. Go to the item template. And we really need the code from the edit template, this eval code, with the single quotes. I'm just going to copy it, and I'm going to get rid of the label inside the item template. And we're just going to create a good old HTML link. To a page which is not existent. Let's make it about that the SPX. Why not? And question mark and some parameter s for student equals. And then we'll paste in the code that we copied before. Just need to take out the middle quote. We're gonna say view inside the link. So let's take a look at how this looks as a web page. Okay, we got three students, and we'll click on View. It goes into the default ASPX, and it passes a parameter in this query string. However, there's nothing here to show because we didn't program this page yet. So let's program it and add some content to that page. We'll go to Solution Explorer. We'll go to About.ASPX. 
for the design, I'm just going to add a simple table here. It will be three rows because we have three fields and we'll have two columns. We'll click on OK. Actually, we'll go to style one and make it 50%. We don't want it to be that big. Here we'll write first and we'll just make them float aligned to the right. All the cells which contain the labels for our text boxes. And now we're just going to go to the toolbox and get a text box. Drag it in there. I'm just going to copy it and paste it into each cell. And let's go through the properties of each text box and give it a unique na name so we're able to identify it. For the first name will be TXT first. And so on for each text box. Now let's go to the VB of this page. Let's go to the page events and we're going to go to the load event and we're going to ask for the query string parameter of S which stands for student. If request that query string that item parentheses S in other words if if the query string doesn't equal nothing, we're going to connect to our database and uh, pull up that student's information and fill up the text boxes accordingly. So the first thing we need to do is create an adapter. So we're going to create a student, student adapter as a data set one and table adapters that students table adapter. I forgot the word new have to as. That's okay. We're going to have to create a data table. And here we don't have to write new because we're going to assign a value to it right away. Data set one dot students data table. And you know something? It's giving us a green error because we didn't write new. But what I really want to do is make it equal something right away. But I can't since we didn't left out a specific query in this table adapter, which is namely to be able to get a student by ID. So let's add a query. Let's use SQL statement, it's select, and we write something very simple where ID equals at ID. And we're going to name it fill by ID, get data by ID. And we'll click on finish and let's rebuild the website. And it's been done. And now we could simply write equals students adapter that get data by ID. And the ID we're, we're passing, of course, is request query string that item. S, we're just going to copy it over here and put it in there. Great. Now, now that we have uh, the student's adapter, uh, student's table filled up, and it's going to be filled up with only a single record, we're going we're gonna to fill up the text boxes accordingly from the database. But the first thing we want to make sure is that the data is not null. If it's null and it tries to fill in uh, the text boxes with a null value, the page will come out with an error. So the way we do it is as follows. If students table and of course is the first record and we we'll do that since record starts positions at from zero and we know it's the first record so it's going to be zero and we're going to write that is first name null what we should have wrote if not okay null so in other words if it's not null then txt first that text equals students table first record dot 
first name and so on for every single record that we want to pre-populate in a text box so I'm just gonna do that now good practice is to make sure that this table after we filled it up using the table adapter uh, is that it has m at least one record because sometimes uh, you know a person might type in the wrong URL and we'll pass that parameter into the to the table adapter and we'll return zero rows so and the page of course will show an error so what we want to do is write if students table that rows that count is greater than zero and we're just going to take all this stuff and put it in, into that if statement okay great so let's go to our default ASPX and try to run it let's pick a student Steve Jobs and as you see the text boxes were filled now what's interesting is that you could use the same form to create uh, or update this record and if you have an interest in how to see how to use the same text box the same uh, form for editing and inserting records following what we're doing here uh, just let me know in the comments